Right, this week we are doing a little bit of a fun one. It's a bit of a quicker one, but we're gonna dive back into Lightroom Classic. We're gonna look at five tips, going from kind of smaller tips up to really quite big tips. Tips that I use pretty much every time I go to edit a photo. Some stuff I just didn't know for a long time, and it's, it's such a great quality of life tip, and some of them just make actually the full edit a lot easier. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh, a nice fresh photography tutorial. Let's just get straight into it this week. Let's dive into Lightroom Classic. Now, we're going to start off with some slightly quicker tips, but they are great quality of life tips, and we're going to go into some bigger ones later on. Let's get straight into it now. So, starting with this photo here. This was taken on one of our courses, actually, up at the Kent Cookery School, which was awesome. This is a tip that I didn't know for years of using Lightroom. And once you know it, it makes your life incredibly easy, just in certain ways, right? So let's say we want to adjust the exposure here. Let's say we bring that all the way up and we think, oh, no, that's way too bright. You can just double click on the name here, exposure, to reset this to zero, right? So I used to do a lot of this, bring it up, and then try and reset it to zero, or you go in and you do something like that. That's fine, but if you're doing that with lots of different sliders, it can just be a lot easier to just double click this name here. And in fact, you can actually double click the kind of overall category there to reset that whole thing as well. So we've just done that to tone, let's go down to presence, so we've got texture, clarity, fiber, and such. Let's double click that, all set back to zero. Now tip number two has to do with the whites and black sliders. Now we looked at these a few weeks ago in detail, but something we didn't mention and something which actually was pointed out in the comments and is a really, really good point. I can't believe I didn't include it in the video to be honest with you. And that's this, if you hold alt while actually moving the whites or black slider, you're gonna see exactly where things start to clip. So if we bring the white slider up here on this photo, you can see they start to clip as I bring that up. And that can be a really useful thing to visualize where the problems are. So you can see I'm getting problems here in these kind of lighter parts. Now, of course, I can bring the highlights down, but it is really useful to see that clipping. So I can bring that down so that that's not actually clipping now. I am still getting a little bit of clipping here, so I could go in and mask that out if I wanted to. And it's the same with the blacks. Let's find a darker photo. So for example, in this photo, I would imagine it might happen a little bit quicker. Let's hold Alt and then use the black slider. As I bring that down, you can see where it's clipping. So we're getting pure black, so crushed blacks around here. Now, sometimes that might be what you wanna go for. For example, this photo now has extremely crushed blacks, but you know what? Maybe that's the style you wanna go for, but now you can know where that's happening. Now, tip number three is something that I use all the time when I'm actually editing photos, but we never really mention it in any of these videos, which is while you're editing, we'll stick with this photo, just press L on the keyboard to actually activate lights out mode. And that is going to darken everything around it. You press it once and it's actually going to kind of half darken it. So with a kind of a lower opacity, but you can still see those outer edges. And once again, and it'll actually go black. And that is such a useful tool to actually view your photo without any of the distractions around it. Now, something that we do use during these videos is the backslash key to see the before and after of the photo. But we can do this in a few different ways. So this photo here, for example, a nice portrait, which is kind of stylized with very much a color grade to it. We can press the backslash key on our keyboard to see the before, so this is unedited and then press it again to see the after. That can be really useful, right? And I think that that's a really useful tool to see how far you've come, and maybe actually to make sure you like the direction that you've gone in. But you can also press Y on your keyboard to see a side-by-side -side of your before and after. And that can also be extremely useful. And then down underneath these photos, we've got a few options for how we want to actually see the before and after. And here, where it says kind of Y and Y, a little bit like this, we can click on this to actually change this to a different kind of look to things. And actually, for example, here, we've now got before on the left and after on the right, and it's kind of split the photo down the middle. Let's click through this again. We now have above and below and again, split along the middle, but horizontally. And that could just be a really useful way to see your kind of before and after. So you've got backslash, you've got Y, both super useful 
for seeing how far you've come with your event. So the last tip is absolutely the biggest one. We're talking about masking. I'm going to talk you through a few different things that I do with masking to make your life a lot easier that I use all the time. So we're going to start by looking at this photo. Now, in this case, I want to mask these rocks, right? I want to brighten them up. And there's a few different ways I could do that, but I'm going to go ahead and open the masking panel, create new mask, go brush here and brush onto these rocks. But the problem is it's spilling out onto the sea, onto the sky, onto everything around it, right? Not ideal. So let's just quickly erase that mask. There we go. All good. I can do that by just holding Alt and then just erasing it. It turns the brush into an eraser, essentially. And what we're going to do is turn on auto mask. Now, this is something I use a lot if I want to mask out one specific part of an image like this. Let's tick it on. It's just underneath all these controls for feather flow density, stuff like that. And now when I actually go ahead and mask onto this rock, it should try and work out where the kind of edges are and stay within them. Now, I am being a little bit cautious, a little bit careful. But you know what? Lightroom is doing a fantastic job of sticking to those edges. Look at that. If I zoom in, look at how much of a good job that's done. And that's automatically just done that as we've kind of gone around brushing that on. And then I can go ahead and lighten that up a little bit, maybe add some clarity. Let's bring that up a little bit as well. Lovely. I think that that's already made a big difference to those rocks, actually. So that's a really nice way of doing things. Now, a similar thing you can do if you want to mask something out in a photo is actually go create new mask and go objects. And this is going to give you a similar kind of thing. We're going to try and mask this out, right? So let's paint on like so. Now you can see I'm going over the edges. No problem. Let's see how Lightroom does. And Lightroom's going to work out what I've painted over and then select it for us. And look at that. That is such a clean mask. And then again, I can lighten that up if I want to. Something like that. Maybe bring the clarity up. Fantastic. And actually, that is a, such a useful way of actually selecting an object in the scene like that. You paint over it. Lauren works out where all the edges are, works out on tone, color, things like that, how, the luminosity of it. And then it's going to mask it for you. That, for example, was such a perfect job. It's, it's such a useful thing to mask something like that. So now we've got a separate mask for these rocks and then for this on top. And the last thing I want to show you with masks is something we do look at in these videos, but we're going to go create new masks. Let's say I want to do the sky. Right now I've got a couple of options. I can go select sky. Fantastic, right? That's done a great job. But let's turn that off. Let's actually go for a linear gradient. Now I want to bring that down. I want to darken the top part of the sky, but I want it feathered. So something like this, I'm going to move that up, right? Great. But as you can see, it is also affecting this structure here, which we don't want. So we want that gradient so we can darken the sky. So let's come up and actually darken the sky. We want to darken that top part of the sky. I'm going to bring the saturation down a bit. And I actually want to go dehaze as well, right? Something like that. Let's bring the saturation down a little bit more. Lovely but I don't want it to be darkening this. I want it to just be the sky. So let's go ahead, mask 10, let's right click, intersect mask with, and in this case, select sky. And that's going to take whatever mask you've just drawn and only apply it to where the mask would, would also intersect somewhere else. So in this case, we're saying, I only want that linear gradient where it also would intersect with a select sky mask. Right? So then if we press O, we can see where the mask is. We've got this lovely gradient coming down over the sky. And I can still move that mask. I can actually grab it and just drag it up. So I've got full control over where it is, but it is only going to be applied where it is also intersecting with where the select sky mask would be. And this can be such a useful tool. You know, we've looked at it in photos like this, where we can actually create this kind of light behind our subject. So this mask here, if I press O, you can actually see there's a nice radial gradient behind our robin that is then intersecting with the background. So that is a radial gradient that I've drawn. I've gone right click, intersect mask with background. And that is such a useful thing to have available to you. So that's five tips, including one big one at the end about masking that I use all the time with Lightroom. We are going to do some different stuff over the next couple of weeks, which is really exciting. But you guys have had some great suggestions for more tutorials. I love hearing what you guys want to see. We've already got some great stuff planned. So let me know down in the comments if there's something specific you'd like to see. I'll always try and get to that before we do some of the other crazy stuff that we've got kind of planned in. It's not that crazy. 
it's all photography based it's all good until then though if you're new don't forget to like and subscribe because there's new stuff all the time i will see you in the next video but until then as always thanks for watching